platforms, iHeart, Radio. Um, I can't tell y'all which one we're going to be on next, but we're going to hold that and let that be a secret. Um, on this happy Saturday, I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Uh, we are on Anchor. We are on, um, you know, you can download that, that uh, what is it called? It's the Cox app. If you download the Cox app, you'll be able to listen to and download all of um, the Kitty J Reveal Show uh, video, uh, not videos, but audio. So you can download the ones that you want to listen to. We want you guys to leave a rating. You can leave a rating also on Google. You can leave a rating. I believe you can leave a, leave a rating on um, Apple as well. So we 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 would appreciate if you guys would do that. Um, we've gotten some some really nice feedback on the show. I'm so so excited about that because you know hard work play, pays off eventually, as they say. Hard work pays off, but you know what? Like they say, hard work trumps talent too. So sometimes you if you guys are trying to figure out how this person is not as talented as some may think that they are. Somebody's loving them. And maybe it's because of the hard work they see these people doing. If you if you have talent and you're not using your business um, mindset in order to conquer the world, guess what? That's your problem. You got to get on the business because it's not always about just talent. People have to learn business as well. Anyway. Um, I want to talk to you guys. Yeah, we're gonna get to this. I know y'all see the hot topic. This is the this is the hot topics right here. So right now, um, I want to talk to you guys about what's in my glass. What's in my glass? What's in my glass today? Woo! I'm gonna do a little bit of harmonizing on here too. Gotta, you know, you gotta make it fun. Anyway. This is my morning drink. This is my morning drink right here. So what's in this? Let me tell y'all what's in, what's in my glass this morning, right? And we say we want to be healthy. You know, we want to be healthy. If we want to be healthy, then we actually have to start doing the work on ourselves. And that means mentally and physically, okay? I get up every morning, stretch, do partly yoga to get my mind right. We have to stretch our sciatica which is our, you know, the sides, we get all locked up. We, we need to stretch our legs. You know, some of us are not doing that. And there's a mental block also because some of us aren't strengthening our minds. So in my drink, this is a part of the health as well, you know, um, of the hot topics. Okay. So I have bee pollen in this, uh, this glass here. Okay. Let me give you a little bit about bee pollen. Bee pollen contains vitamins, minerals and antioxidants decreases inf inflammation improves immunity menopausal and wound healing especially for the women you know wound healing which means all oh, you know that stomach area all that and helps mentally so yeah get you some bee pollen get you some bee pollen right we also have wild cherry bark root and this drink right here, um, that's good for bronchitis. You know, I, I've, I've had a touch. Of, I've had bronchitis. And, you know, people say it doesn't go away and it can be contagious. So you have to really be careful with that. But I find that since I have changed my eating habits, I'm not doing meat. You know, I do fish. I do seafood. Yeah, I do. Um, but it, it has helped me to rid that bronchitis, you know, and having those um, humidifiers and stuff in the house, because sometimes, you know, it's so, in the wintertime especially, it's so dry with the heat on and everything. It takes away from the moisture that we need to have. And um, we need to kind of release, you know, help that heat, you know, uh, fumigate throughout the throughout the air. So, okay, so it um, also helps with lung problems, diarrhea, gout, etc. Right. You can look it up. You can look up wild cherry root if you want to. So we also have blackberry bark root in here. And this is good for 
mouth and throat irritation, heart disease, gout, swelling, diarrhea, and we're going to say et cetera for that one as well. Um, we, the green, you probably wonder, what is that green stuff in there, right? Because, you know, they say this green is minerals. It's chlorella. It's a seaweed, right? And chlorella is, um, it detoxes the body, improves blood sugar levels, manage respiratory system, respiratory disease, and it releases heavy metals in the body. So that's a good one to have as well in the house. You know, that Corella detoxes, awesome. You know, you'll find yourself going to the bathroom, but not like, you know, uh, often, you know how like you're taking a laxative or something. It's not like that, but it does. You should be going regularly every day. You should you should have a bowel movement every single day. Okay. So on the Keita J Reveal show, hot topics, y'all. We don't have topics once we oh let me show y'all. I know some of y'all have seen this shirt, right? This is created by Keita J. So it says, I am powerful, I am amazing, and I am successful, right? And these are all everything within the earth, right here. You got your water, you got your fire, you know, all that, right? You got you got all that anyway. Hot topics, hot topics, and we keep it positive over here. We're not shady or anything like that. So if you're looking for shade, this is not it. Okay, on the Keto J Reveal Show, I know y'all already saw it, and I actually shared this on my um my my actual personal feed, right, Byron Allen. So we, do, you know, if we've been paying attention to it, I've been looking at Byron Allen for some years now because I became interested in him. When I found out he was a comedian and he went into a bigger business for himself, you know, understanding if you guys saw the breakfast club, Byron Allen started at his living room table. But, I, you know, there's more to the story. Of course, a lot of times people are not able to give you all of that information, you know, about themselves. It's like piecing everything together, unless you keep a journal, a lot of times some of us forget, you know, how we truly are doing things. Because I can tell you, if you ask me, what were the things that I did back in, you know, the 90s, I can't remember all that. And of course, I I will say this, um, maybe it's because I did have a a head injury when I was younger, you know, which I'm not going to talk about that right now. But, you know, um, and sometimes you can be very forgetful when you have head injuries and things like that. So I don't remember everything about, you know, my life. There's some things in my life that I did journal because I wanted to kind of be up on, you know, what was going on with me as I, you know, got older. I could, I could go back and look at those things. But anyway, um, we, we're talking about Byron Allen. We're going to listen to a little bit of the clip. If you guys want to go check the clip out, um, this is where you can you can search, you know, Karen Hunter show um, online. Uh, I'm just going to give you like a gist of it enough to, to give you some information. Some of this was not exposed on The Breakfast Club, but I believe listening to Karen Hunter show, they kind of broke everything down because they have a lawyer on the show as well. The Breakfast Club didn't have a lawyer on the show. So the the you know I didn't know um, everything that you know followed through with the suit because like I said he 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 explained things better on this on the Sirius XM show than he did on the actual Breakfast Club show and I think they were really able to ask some really good questions um, as nothing against the Breakfast Club but I just think sometimes you know depending on who you're looking at and if people are truly looking for information or they're just doing it for the show, you know, so you got to have some really good questions that you want to ask people, you know, he's willing to tell you. So it's not like he's hiding anything, Byron Allen. He's willing to let you know what's going on. But, uh, you know, anyway, here's the clip, a little bit of the clip from, um, from the show, you guys. There were some parade organizers in Boston. This went all the way to the Supreme Court. There were some parade organizers in Boston who said, hey, gay people, you can't be in our parade. 
right? A group of gay people trying to be in a parade in Boston. Parade organizers said gay people cannot be in our parade. So, rightfully so, the gay community sued them. Sued them. This thing goes all the way to the Supreme Court, right? And unfortunately, there was a miscarriage of justice. And they ruled in favor of the parade organizers. And the parade organizers used the First Amendment. And they said, having gay people in our parade infringes on our First Amendment rights. And it changes our freedom of expression. And the Supreme Court ruled in their favor and allowed them to discriminate against gay people. people. Which kind of gave the basis for, I want to make a cake, cake for you. So, so this is where we see our 14th Amendment, Amendment right to be processed and executed under the law being subjected to the white right, right. And, and I'm saying white, white because, because there's a racialized distribution of rights when you think about it, to freedom, freedom of expression. Of expression. And, and if my expression is in opposition, opposition to your humanity, my First Amendment right to express that trumps the 14th Amendment right to be able to get. Amen, So they go in, and I call it like a twilight zone. Oh, is the, the, I'm, I'm watching, watching the number one and number two cable operator in America who's supposed to be brought by the broadband and search to America, America sitting here using, using the First Amendment to discriminate? And then I heard the greatest words ever. ever. Judge Wu said, are you standing here trying, trying to use the First Amendment <laughs> to, and to say that that's a pathway to discriminate against people? Because they were basically saying, you know what you did to gay people? Supersize that and use that on, on all on black people and all minorities. And so the judge was like, no, get out of here with that. So then when they didn't get anywhere with that after doing that, I couldn't believe that. I said, guys, you shouldn't be using that law. You shouldn't be selling that law. You shouldn't be selling It's a bad ruling, Comcast and Charter, Brian Roberts and David Cohen. You shouldn't be using that law. You shouldn't be denouncing that decision. So, so shame, shame on, on you as you're paying billions of dollars and you are celebrating, celebrating something you're trying, trying to supersize. To supersize. So that's a, why wouldn't why they, would they want, want to license your, your company's company channel? channel? Well, okay, so okay, that's, that's, a, that's a whole that's economic, economic thing. thing. But I want to know, you're using, you're using, you're using, using the Civil Rights Act of 1866. It's a racial issue. Not a money issue. That's what I said. So I said, look, on the Civil Rights Act of 1866, here's what they said. we said here. This law, this law was put, was on, the put on the books in the year of 1866. The slaves, the slaves were free in December, in December 1865. 1865. So, so instead, instead of, with some historians, story, instead of us instead getting, getting reciprocity, reciprocity, 48 years in a mule, we got this, we got this law. law. And this and law this says law that you will that have, you have a fair pathway, pathway in, contracting. in contracting. And it was especially, and it was especially for all minorities. All minorities. And at that point, at that point, it was mainly, it was mainly, mainly three newly slaves. freed slaves. So you have, so a, you pathway have a pathway in economic, in economic inclusion, inclusion, in contract, in contract, commercial contracting, contract, and government. government. And that was important, and that was important because, because at that time, time you, had you had formerly enslaved, enslaved people. people. Yes. Yes. If, you, yes. if, you, if you can if you read, read. And if you can understand which was illegal, if you can read, if you can contract effectively, which means you understand the powers of negotiation, there is an equality in the parties who are contracted. If I'm a former slave or you are a former slave, or there's an imbalance in power there. So my ability to say, hey, I need to now get a job that Hazy, hazy, because I'm formerly in and I am now free, I now need to work. work. I need to enter a contract. contract. What was happening was black people were being ultimately, ultimately manipulated by the former owners who owned the land, land who owned their, their ability to have access to the land because, land because black, black people were being liberated from former slave owners. Did. Did. And so, and so if you're controlling who has access to the land in the rarity society, where we are wealth and our ability to sustain ourselves as our ability to have access to the land, I don't own land. I need to go and contract with this person who does, who just so happens to be completely fine to the way they did three days ago when I was still there it is. So if you don't have these federal laws in place that are going to protect black people during this time, that's how you get sharecropping, that's how you get convict leasing, that's how you get all of these entrees that we now know as a prison industrial complex because white people were committed to holding on to the slave master relationship even if it needed a different name and a different structure. There it is. You nailed it. That law, that's our reciprocity. That law, that's the pathway. Instead of the 48 years of mule, you carry you, you got, got this, this law. law. Now, now go, go get, get it. it. Right? right? With these judges, judges with these who see you, you as not, not having any rights that the white man is about to respect. respect. And there it is. And now, now you have, have someone with Comcast, Comcast did, what they, they said is check, check it out. It out.
uh, in, in order. order. See, this, this is what they did. They went to the test and when we, so we so lost, lost twice, twice in, in Comcast, but so we won on Charter. Charter. No, that was downtown. So Charter was upset that we won. So they said, we're going to find get your locket for your appeal, which is basically, we're going to appeal this right now. And Judge Wu said, hey, why not? Eventually, this is going to go to the Supreme Court. And I said, you kidding me? He goes, yeah. He says, well, Byron Allen's not going to stand down, and Comcast and Charter's not going to stand down. I have, I have two, two well-funded, well you know, you know I, I have three, three well-funded well funded entities are not going to let up, and they're going to fight to the bitter end. We're going to end up in the Supreme Court. Court. He said that. So, so he, he said, said, go ahead and go to the, go to the Ninth Circuit. So I said, well, if Charter's going to take me to the Ninth Circuit, I'm going to take, take Comcast to, to the Ninth Circuit, circuit and we're going to get on the happy bus, bus and we all go down to the Ninth Circuit, and we're going to get this done. So we go to the Ninth Circuit. And I hire an amazing lawyer, and he goes in, and he whips it out, and we made history. The Ninth Circuit ruled in our favor twice. They upheld the charter decision and reversed the Comcast decision. And they said, no, you cannot use the First Amendment as a pathway to discriminate. And no, we don't think you should use a higher standard. Wow. Okay. So that. I told you guys that that is more informative to me than the Breakfast Club. Even though I've been listening to Byron Island, he hasn't really gone that in depth into what the situation really was. I've heard, you know, this is my first time like, like hearing them using like the First Amendment and all that stuff, you know, against his the ruling and then going to the Supreme Court and all this, you know. I knew the Supreme Court, but I just didn't know as far as, like I said, how in depth it was. But this is a serious matter. This lawsuit has been going on since 2016. OK. And my question was and, and, and nothing against and I did post this on my personal page. I said, I'm wondering, you know, now that I've been, you know, I've, I've been reading a lot on. Uh, what's happening in, in the world and how everything is changing, technology, you know, because I, I need to be up on the up and up. And then I got information that's coming in from other people that I know that are into those worlds as well. My thing to him is, and no, no shade against uh, Byron Allen, because I feel like he's doing a wonderful thing. And, you know, he he's helping, you know, the legacy, you know, as far and as far as us as people, brown folk, you know, um, he's helping us to um, progress, you know, and, and get some some better some better uh, legal uh, information. I don't know if I should say information, but but legalize some things better than what it is right now, or change some laws um, because you know we haven't had things ratified since like. And I'm talking like slavery stuff, you know, information and constitution. 1865, 1866, we got to go back to the 1800s to where things were ratified. They haven't ratified anything after that. So if you go look at the constitution and you see how it's written and when things were ratified and when they weren't, which means they have changed the law, they haven't. You know, the laws are still stagnant since 1800s, and which is that's a sad case for us. You know, but he's doing a good thing and not, you know, um, backing down on what he believes in. Because I feel like a lot of us are programmed out here, and we're like, "Yes, massa, we'll do it." You better be quiet, massa, talking. You better be quiet and just follow what massa. I, you know. I've been in the working world. I'm still in the working world. And I understand how that is. You know, even our brown folk, they like, come on, master, master telling you what to do. You know, and, and it's like, you don't have a say so in what somebody's saying. You don't feel like that this person is mis mistreating me. And it's not just others. It's us too. It's people of your, your own community that does that. You know, you should be able to speak up for what you believe in. But the thing is about Byron Allen, he has money. And when you're successful, you can take things the long route. Because sometimes they'll dread 2016, this has been going on. It's 2019, almost 2020. And this case, this case here is still going on. Okay. So you think about it. Somebody that didn't really have the funds 
as long as this case is going on and they're sending it to here and sending it there, then you got to keep paying lawyers. This is how your money's washed. This is exactly how your money gets washed. And then you don't win the case because you run out of funds of fighting it for so long. But it's a good thing that, like he said, he's wealthy. He He's rich. He has money. So they can drag it on as long as they want to. Regardless of that, but I do I do feel like because times are changing, I do want to add this. Do you want to invest in do you want to still invest in a network when I I've been reading that networks are declining? They're they're upping the rates on networks, right? Because they're declining. You know, they're not making the money they used to, and most cable companies um are not doing really well. You know, they're, they're not. The networks are not doing well. Cable is not doing well. You know, Netflix, you got um, all these apps, Amazon. People are coming up off of these apps. Even CBS has, has created their own app. You know, even if you were to do something online where people can log in and it could be five, seven dollars, you know, I think he could get a lot of people behind him. But I understand the case is important. You have to go that route first and complete this mission, but then also brainstorm on, is it really worth me having these channels uh, or networks? Because like I said, networks are going to be, to me, they're probably going to be a dinosaur soon. From, from the things that I've been reading about technology, I don't think it's going to last too much longer. And people putting money in and they're not getting a lot of money out. Anyway, um, what do we have next on our agenda? So you guys can, you know, you, you, like I said, this is going to be audio. This is also going to be on YouTube, this video. You guys can chime in with your comments. You can all also put your comments on the side here, you know, on, on Facebook. And we can definitely have a discussion about it. Um, and if anybody ever wants to come on the show to have a discussion about anything, I can send you a code and you could come on that way. So we're going to do that. We're we going to do that, y'all. We, we, I don't know. We're working on our, all, we're working on everything on the show. So we're just starting this, you know, um, uh, Facebook live streaming because live streaming is big now. Live streaming is growing. They want people to live stream. So this is what I'm using my platform for. Okay. So next, 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 who do we have? What's next? Oh, Terrence Howard, y'all. You know, people was having a lot of discussions about Terrence Howard, right? Terrence Howard um, recently went on a show, and I, I'm, I'm going to put the video up for you guys to um, for you guys to um, link on to that. So Terrence Howard, from my understanding, um, you know, he had he there was some talks about him. Uh, you know, talking about geometry and the ways of life and, and, and the this and the that. I can't even repeat everything he was saying, but it, it just sounds so good when he was saying it. Like it was just smooth in my ear. Like, wow. I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those, what they call you, uh, a sapiosexual, I guess. Sapiosexual. Sapiosexual. Let me make sure I got the right, I got the right terminology because I could be wrong. I think it's safe. I think it's sapiosexual because I was I was looking up something um, and I could be. OK, sapiosexual. Let's see. OK, so I'm a sapiosexual. It's uh, finding intelligence, intelligence, sexually attract, attractive or arousing. So I love people that are. Good at, you know, just make things sound good, but I also have to watch their actions. You know, you don't want to get caught up and somebody just talking the talk and, you know, it, it's some kind of cult that they have put together and here you are following that, you know, but I love to hear people. It's, you know, I'm into men. So, you know, ain't no women involved in my life as far as I love my daughter, love my sister, my mother, you know, outside of that love people that I associate with. You know, I want everybody to do well, but I'm just saying I'm into men and um, a sapiosexual, somebody that's very intellect, intellectual, you know, can make things sound good. I'm like, oh. 
you know, you never know. The, the, we talk about the yoni, but we're going to leave that part out of it. But I'm just saying, the way Terrence Howard talks, how he speaks, you know, he has a... a a melody with his words, you know, and 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 I, and I think it's it's all about the melody of the person, the sound, you know, which draws an individual to an intellectual like that. But like I said, you also don't want to get caught up on the words. You want to watch the actions of the person. So we're going to um, we're going to get into uh, this video with Terrence Howard. And I want to talk, I want to discuss this as well a little bit. Cause I mean, he was like really deep into this stuff. Like, I'm like, oh shoot, Tara's really, he really doing some talking. Like he's talking about geometry and you know, the ways of the world and the movement. I'm into all of that stuff. So I'm drawn to it. But anyway, here, here is, here is, here is um just a little bit of Terrence Howe. And I'll show you where you can find this footage from as well. I'll, I'll give you some information on this. And that's the balance between all things in existence is that some balance between its electric contraction mm -hmm. and its magnetic dispersion. Okay, so since you're talking about, you know, mag magnetic, so what does the idea that we've all been taught opposites attract? Would that be accurate? Because that seems different. Well, let's look at it. Um, you show me two opposites. Let's look at air um, or hot water, cold water. If you have cold water coming down and you have hot water coming up, what happens to them? Do they just mix together happily? Or do they do everything they can to avoid each other? Opposites don't track in nature. Opposites repel each other. That's what nature does. It's the positive things. It's two people that are alike. It's their positive electric charge that brings them together. Like, wow, you're like me, I'm like you. Ooh, look at how we get along. Yeah. And when they, it's when they become opposites yeah. that their relationship, you know, we no longer yeah. see the same way. So I believe that we have been force-fed um, deliberately a misunderstanding and misconception of how nature views Why? the very words we use. What What is the reason for misinforming us? Well, the same way you give a child a certain amount of control while they're growing, you know, we'll tell them how to open up the door in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. but we don't tell them where all the keys are, mm -hmm. you know, because he might abuse those things because he doesn't know that if he opens up a particular door, there may be something dangerous behind it. So I think that humanity has been given a certain amount of, of leash so that we can have some run in the in the in the in the yard. But that leash ha is attached to um, a chain, and the chain is has been ingrained inside of us to where we don't even question. We don't question how. The platonic silence. I wish we could pull up that um, to, um, so we can get past the conversation because right now it's still in this debatable place. Well, could it be right or could it be wrong? Let's let's get to let's get to some some real some real can we stuff. Start, that, can we start with the flower of life? Because I know that's yes, one of the I main, love that. I would love to start with that because I mean I've already done my own research, but just for you to tell me because I mean that was one of the main you know, things that you said, you said you were able to open up the flower of life properly. Yeah, so let's like, walk through that. And the good thing about the flower of life is remember the flower of life is, has always, it's one of the oldest symbols known to humanity and on every continent that it, that it occurs. And it occurs on every single continent. It's always called the flower of life, even in that language. So, Platonic solids are descendants from this flower of life. It's them attempting to open it. Now, one of the things that I noticed with nature, and what Russell spoke about constantly, is all energy in the universe is expressed in motion, all motion in waves, and all waves are curved. 
So where did the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids, the tetrahedron? Okay. Those, they just made straight lines where through curved spaces where the circles were intersecting. But it makes sense. This made sense to um, someone thinking that the world was flat. Here okay. again, no straight lines, but that they draw straight lines through. Okay. You see, the, you, you see what I'm saying? No. Yeah, I'm looking at it, yeah. This is the linear perspective of the universe, the linear perspective. And for the last 6,000 years, all our math and science has been built upon this. And therefore, the Pythagorean theorem, all of these things, um, all of the, the field equations that they have to explain the largest thing, even gravity, all of those things were based upon how these things move. So let's go to, DJ, take him to, yeah, that's much better. Now, we decided to approach it from a different perspective. Okay. It's like, let's cut the individual pieces out and put them together according to universal ratio. So as you come down onto this, you'll see what happens when four bubbles meet. Mm -hmm. And this is the space that's left over between them. This is the space where the four bubbles do not touch. This is the negative space that controls them. Does that make any sense to you? Um, a little bit. I'm saying it's literally the in-between spaces. It's the in-between spaces. If you were to take literally four balls together, mm -hmm. you know, or picture four balls in your hand, four um, marbles in your hand, and if you squeeze them as hard as you can and get them to where they couldn't move, Okay. There would still be a certain amount of space that's left over where they cannot touch. Okay. That's that negative space right there. And this is what happens when four bubbles meet. Now remember they had a square. Now let's go to where eight bubbles meet. And we can scroll over the top of it. Now this right here by all of the literature and by how it behaves, they would normally call this something to do with being the proton or the center, the draw, the central attractor. Go back to the one that had four, um, DJ. Thank you. This having four, what this shows here is that there are eight poles to the smallest dynamic because each pole has a point on it, or it has a cavity to it. The ones with the point is spinning out, it's expanding. That one is actually spinning its way out. So those become magnetic because they expand their way out, but the ones that are kind of okay. that, that space right there. Okay, so you guys have seen, um, you know, that you can find the video, um, this conversation was with a lady named Candace. He said he wanted to do the video with her because I guess his some people had saw she has a nice following on YouTube, and they you know saw that she was kind of backing them up because there were some people, some Caucasian folks on the news that was making fun of what I mean. A lot of people was making fun of it, but I'm more understanding because I like I said my mind is already reached out into another other dimensions i'm not in living in a three most of us are in a 3d dimension right so all that geometry stuff and math that he's talking about that's according to the dimensions that that's dimensions the dimensions that you live in which means your mind hasn't expanded enough to know uh certain things that's happening outside of your environment so some of us haven't gotten to that, but you can you can look at the video. Her name is Candace, right here. It says video on on her on her channel, daytime tea time. If you want to check her out, um, these that's my hot topic. You know, I'm always trying to you know give some positive positive information. That's what we're into over here at the Keita J Reveal Show. Keita J is silly. I'm I'm artistic, you know, but I'm also I love. You know, like I said, I'm I'm a sapiosexual. I love intellectual things. Um, my humor is built off of some of those things. So some people just don't understand what it is that you're doing. 
you have reached out into other dimensions. Some people haven't caught up yet. You know, it's a lot of people that have not caught up to that. No, no, no shade to them. You got to get there. You know, there, there are things that we go through in our dreams and our, you know, um, we hear voices talking to us. People would tell you you're crazy only because they haven't experienced those things. But that's why I say when you get around people that you like attracts like kind of thing, you know, you guys can share those stories. That's why the church folk hang with the church church folk most of the time, you know, only because they feel like some people wouldn't understand them outside of that. Some hang with other people, but more so church because it's the word, it's, it's, it's study groups, and, and that's what they're focused on. You look at couples that are really into one another, you know, same thing with them. You know, a lot of couples, they like to go out together. You know, they don't want single people in their circle. You know, a lot of times they want to be amongst one another, like attracts like. We're all couples. You know, we want to be together. We don't want that outside influence on what we're doing because we don't need that. So that this is this is how this is how people operate in in this in our lifetime. And some, like I said, some just haven't caught up with it, but I haven't even finished watching the interview. I was just, you know, I was just like ecstatic at the fact that, you know, I hadn't even found him talking about more in depth about what he meant and, you know, those things. And some of the stuff I can dissect when he was talking about it um, on uh, the Emmys or whatever, I think it was the Emmys. However, there's some things that I needed more knowledge on. I knew he was talking about symbols and, you know, the wave of life. And, you know, it was more mathematics. They say mathematics and science runs the runs the world, you know, and it does. And you have people that are into something. One, That's why I say we change. If you go back to one of my other videos, we change so much. You know, you may be one person that today you like this. Some years later, you're not even into that anymore. You you have changed. You're in another realm. You know, when you're no, no longer in that space, that means you have entered into another dimension, another world, and you are now experiencing your something is telling you you need to experience other things, you know, for yourself in order for you to stay on track and, and keep yourself uh, abreast of your path, you know, wherever it is that your path is going to lead you. You, we never ever know those things. So, I mean, it's a lot. If you do yoga, I do yoga. If you get into Tai Chi, they're starting, they have Tai Chi classes now. Go check some of these whirlwind classes out where it's more earthly and, you know, it <clears throat> helps you kind of uh, with your mental and, 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 and it helps you to understand, you know, waves of life. I'm telling you, you will not be mad. Okay. So, Okay, so we're going to go ahead to our next topic. Um, and if you want to see the video, like I said, it, it's there. Uh, the link is there. I'm not hiding it from anybody. You guys can go check it out. Um, oh, y'all, let me tell you. Hold on one moment. Hold on. Hold on to your love. Okay, so look. I got to tell y'all. I got to tell y'all. Listen. I was, I was, I was look, listening to some oldies, not, I don't want to consider them oldies, you know, but I was listening to some nineties music, you know, and the other night I was just jamming. I was, I was in the house like, whoa, that nineties music will do it to you. Right. I say even the early 2000, but we, 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 you know, came across my man right here, Donnell Jones and genuine has a show on um online you guys can go check it out i'm gonna give y'all a little bit a little taste of it okay just a little taste just a little taste okay hey. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. 
I'm over here jamming, right? So if you guys want to go check that out, that is on um uh what what's the name of it? It's on um Zach Zach Simmons page. It's Zach Simmons page on you on on online, right? So you guys can go check that out. But yeah, Donnell, I I hardly ever see Donnell. Well, in the past, I was always looking for Donnell. Uh, jones show and i could never really find one i was like what why don't they have donnell jones performing anywhere i don't know what was going on but it was very hard for me to um to find donnell jones back in the day performing somewhere when anytime i would look donnell jones up to see where he was performing it, it was always like nowhere close to the dc area it was hardly anywhere. So I, I don't, I, you know, it's all it's good to see him now on Instagram, putting out new music. Now, I think lately he's shown his workout. But I know I didn't show you guys Genuine. Genuine is also on there. I just don't want to put too much feed, too much of it on here because, you know, they regulate that stuff. And this is going on my YouTube page. Um, but again, uh, it was good seeing them. And then I think they had another group on there. The, it wasn't the Lost Boys. Loose Ends or something. Loose Ends was another group that performed with them. So, and I don't think Loose Ends really had as many hits. Donnell Jones, he got mad hits. Seeing him in love, seeing him not live, but seeing him on video, um, singing live. I was like, you know, his voice is a little shaky and everything. I don't know if if you know he was going through some cold or whatever. But I don't care. His hits are banging. Okay. And I, yeah, I'm going to use it like a 90s, 90s word. His hits are banging. That's all I'm going to say about Donnie. I ain't got nothing bad to say. I was like, hmm, his voice is a little shaky, though. You know, and genuine, it seemed like he was lip syncing a little bit. You know, I don't know if he was truly singing all his music, but he sounded pretty good. He sounded pretty good. Like I said, Donnell Jones, mm, he looks real good, muscular. Mm, yeah. He ain't too muscular, but he got a little bit of. Chisel with him. Yeah, he looked real good. Anyway, <laughs> so one more thing I'm going to talk about. Um, and um, I'm a uh, like I I don't know over the years, like I say, you start changing. I've gotten into and that and that maybe because I I'm, I do voiceover, I do characters, character voices and things like that for some, you know, I do it for some companies. But um I wanna say uh Wow, you know, um, I know I need to get it out. That marble, I don't know if you guys know. I don't know if you guys know this or not. But, uh, you know, podcasting right now is pretty big. It, it's growing. It's really 
really growing. That's that, I mean, that's that's all I can say that it's it's definitely growing. But right now, um, right now, I want to say Spotify is doing really, really good with um, their podcasts. You, you know, people coming on and everything. Um, about them doing well, I've been I've been seeing a lot of companies are, and when I say companies, I'm saying like podcasting studios are starting to uh they're starting to um add these contracts with other people right with other people so that being said marvel has a new podcast contract with pandora right right now and if we just we just even go over like I said, these companies are now, uh, hold on, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys. So Marvel has a contract, Marvel Entertainment and Sirius XM enters a major multi-year deal to concrete original podcasts for Sirius XM and Pandora. And if, if some of you guys don't know, Pandora has been bought by Sirius XM. Uh, I wanna say maybe like, some years it hasn't been it's been maybe like a, a few years maybe two or three at least maybe two years pandora has endured um uh uh uh, uh Pan, Pan, i'm sorry sirius has adored pandora so they bought sirius bought pandora um like i said podcasting is doing really well now spotify their stock is up like really, really high. They've had uh, multiple people coming on board podcasting right now. And I don't I don't know if it's like a, a thing to do right now, like people trying to get in because they want to monetize and you find that you can monetize online, but you got to do the work. It's not just about getting online and doing stuff like you really got to market yourself. You got to figure out ways to to. Um, to put your stuff out there. And there there are ways, like I talk about marketing a lot here and there. I, I talk to some people about marketing, you know, but there's a fee included in, you know, I talk to people freely about marketing, but I can't be giving away everything for free, okay? So the things that I do for marketing, sometimes you guys, like you gotta pay attention to what people are doing. You gotta read up on stuff. You gotta figure it out for yourself, you know, Everything that works for one person is not going to work for everybody. So you got to find out what works for you. So this is supposed this this deal is supposed to take place in 2020. So hopefully I can get in there and get some, you know, voice work done, because like I said, I do voiceovers as well. Um, I do a lot of creative things. You people don't know. I still work a full time job. But that's that's you know not something that I've taken away from myself yet. You know, here and there I may need to do some business stuff for a period of time, and I might have to you know call take off or something just for business travel. So there are things that I do. So I always say if people are looking for voice, oh you know somebody that does voice, you know um, I've always been into characters since I was younger. I you know if you, if you were to ask my sister about me she would tell you i used to do all kinds of little voices um some of them i it's hard to do now you know trying to imitate things but i'm working on it i'm always working on something working on the things that i'm into you have to start doing what it is that you want to do but anyway like i said with with this being said um 2020 you know they're doing something spotify has a deal with uh what's her name um Gosh, I can't think of her name right now. But Spotify has some deals that's supposed to take place in 2020. I believe HBO, no, Netflix is going into podcasting as well. So they're going to be, if you can't get your show online, if, if it's hard for you to do that and you have a budget to hire people to come in and voice stuff and do auto audio, do audio. You never know what that's going to grow into. Like, you just got to get out here and do it, right? 
We got to we gotta get out here and do it. Do what it is. Don't get stagnant working them full-time jobs and you're not doing anything that you love. I find that a lot of times when people leave their jobs, you know, they retire. Some of them haven't had a hobby and I don't know how long because they were so busy going to work, especially taking care of kids. You're not doing anything else outside of that. My Both my kids, one is 21, the other, and he's not here. He's San Diego. The other one is here, but she's fifth. She's, she's older, you know? So I have found it within myself, the things that I was missing, the, um, that I didn't do when I was younger. I felt like I, you know, there was a need, something there was a calling for, you know, I had to get out here and get and do something, you know, and especially being around a lot of some humorous people. And, you know, I was always humorous. I was always kind of drew the crowd of people that love to have fun and enjoy life. So I, I'm still, I'm still in that world. Like if whatever it is that you want to do, guys, you can always, you can do it. You can do whatever it is that you want. You know, you don't have to back down to nobody. Okay, I'm I, I'm always. If you need some marketing tips, you know, I'm available. You can email me. I have the website available. You can always go on the website, check existing existing nature media website out. Um, see what I have going on right now. I haven't been putting anything up right now because I'm I'm not um. I don't have anything to kind of put out there to give to you guys, but I, I am working on stuff. And there's sometimes I have to sign NDAs. I can't expose what I'm doing. I can't tell you guys anything. And then I've gotten to the point where I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want to tell people after a while when I'm working on some really big stuff, I'll let you guys know, but I might not be able to let you know right away. Like I said, these companies, they don't, they're not fond of you letting people know what you're doing all the time some of them like you know just keep it hush and then you may talk to your your assistant or whatever and, and the assistant is like nah just you know let them put it out there later when when the time is right you know so when the time is right you know i share some things online that i've done for some companies some people just don't know that i've done it for some companies because i put it out as a video and sometimes i'll link the company to it you know, and you don't know that I've done it for a company, but it's all good. It's all good. You know, like I said, folks ain't checking for you until everybody else is checking for you outside of who they are. You slowly but surely see them checking for you. It's all good. Like I'm not looking, I'm not big on followers. I used to kind of want them and this and that, but now it's like, if they come gradually, it's, it's all cool. And, and I will say, I've been building up my Snapchat. My Snapchat, oh, people are loving my Snapchat. My Snapchat is, exists the letter in nature. My Instagram is exists the letter in nature. And um, we growing. We growing. I feel good about it. I feel, as a matter of fact, I feel great about life because I'm not just sitting around waiting on people to call me. You know, get your journal, people. You could be doing stuff, okay? Whatever it is that you want to do, okay? I listen to a lot of positive things, a lot, to the point where I have tunnel vision. I could care less what people think about me. I could care less about, you know, uh, what they expecting me to do because, you know, you got to run your life. Anyway, I'm like I said, there. I'm, I'm only saying this because like I said, you could be out here getting it, doing some of this stuff, Sirius XM, uh, Pandora, uh, Spotify, YouTube. Um, and, and that's only, if, and you don't have to just be a creator that likes to do content like this. You can do, you know, you can be on the business side. Maybe you're more of a business person. I'm both. I'm in both worlds. Because I got to understand business before I can do all this other stuff. This is how people money get taken. Anyway, y'all, um, that concludes the show. We spoke about some really good things, you know, for almost an hour. We got five minutes left and it's an hour that we've been on. But the Keita J Reveal Show, Hot Topics. Make sure you guys uh, stay tuned because, like I said, we have more projects that we're working on. 
You may not see a lot of stuff now, but you're going to see it eventually. And I appreciate each and every one of you, even if you're not on my team, you know, maybe one day, just maybe one day you'll be on it. Okay. But it's all good. You come at your own pace. And I want to say gracefully, I appreciate you and appreciate yourself, love yourself and be amazing. <laughs>